वेल कम इन दिस लेक्चर वी वुड डू द समरी ऑफ डाउन टू अर्थ फ्रॉम फर्स्ट टू फिफ्टीन में मेजर टॉपिक ऑफ फोकस दिस टाइम इज फूड सिक्योरिटी नाउ अर्जेंटीना विच प्रोड्यूस टेन टाइम्स इट्स रिक्वायरमेंट हैज ब्रॉट इन टैक्सेज ऑन द एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ बीफ कॉर्न एंड सोया सिमिलरली इंडोनेशिया हैज स्टॉप द एक्सपोर्ट ऑफ पाम ऑयल्स द हॉर्न ऑफ एफ्रीका विच आर द मेनली द केनिया सोमालिया एंड इथोपिया देर आर नियरली ट्वेंटी मिलियन पीपल हु आर फेसिंग एक्यूट हंगर क्राइसिस बिकॉज ऑफ द राइजिंग फूड price world bank has called this as a seismic hunger crisis and this crisis is predominantly in the regions of africa and west asia and it is believed that with every percentage increase in the food price there would be additional 10 million people who would move into the slot of poverty so the poverty cases would increase significantly now denmark became the first country to have a climate label for food products so it would inform the customers how climate smart the food is so a new initiative definitely Water crisis has been uh, one of the major issues. Pali Marwa region has been suffering of scarcity as the Javai Dam has uh, dried up, and eight million liters of water daily has been brought from a special train from Jodhpur. Uh, in Chile, uh, it was announced that a plan to ration water for the Santiago, which is the capital, would be done as the country is facing thirteenth year of its drought. Uh, preserving species is again an important aspect in new zealand more than 4000 species are at risk of extinction maroi community and its role has been important to implement the biodiversity strategy there is another world largest carbon removal machine which has set nearly 4000 tons of carbon dioxide from the air each year to its station in iceland and this suddenly stopped working due to unusual conditions the orca system is operating uh in the airs using giant fan and fabric tubes and it needs modifications after the equipments have froze due to fr frequent snowstorms and rains the next is in the regions of tamil nadu maharashtra high uh, madras high court has brought a order that it would ban grazing of animals in the forest area now this was brought in line with the case which was filed for the megamalai wildlife sanctuary and the theni forest area because there was a huge destruction of the grassland and uh, the cattle which were going for grazing would cause cattle diseases in the wild animals as well so this has been one of the major concerns now in theni most of the traditional communities have native malai madu species now these species are not reared for mulching they are re reared ma man uh, mainly for manure so they are reared mainly for manure and therefore that's again an important topic that we need to understand now uh usman uh, usman sagar and himmat sagar lakes are in the outer skirts of hyderabad there have been government orders to prohibit any kind of construction within 10 kilometers of this uh, old reservoirs it was passed to make the reservoir pollution free however despite the uh, acts it was repealed and the catchment area has been concretized uh, orders now allow real estate companies to carry out construction in the 84 villages which are lying in the catchment area now what happened in 80, 1908 hyderabad witnessed severe floods in the musi river during that time nizam requested moksha gundam vishweswarya uh, who was the diwan to actually have a flood control plan this plan was known as vishweshwarya's plan now vishweshwarya's plan talked about two reservoirs at hyderabad one on musi the other was isa the idea was to absorb the extra water during the flood season now till 75 the reservoirs were able to meet the drinking demands but as the city expanded uh, the waters started coming from uh, krishna and godavari rivers which were nearly 200 kilometers away and <clears throat> together they provide nearly 226.5 billion liters of water every day heat waves have been affecting the wheat grain production we have covered a separate video on it extremely important topic for your upsc optional uh, preparation as well so this time shrivel grain were obtained march is the season which was witnessed as the hottest in the last 122 years and as a result uh, the green size has reduced we call this as shrivel greens uh, fci procures only up to 6% shrivel greens but this time it was 12 to 20% and that has brought a, a setback to the farmers uh, the temperature range for the wheat ideally is 20 to 25 degrees celsius for the germination in late october november uh, 
it is sowed and in April it is harvested and we have seen the record temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius in March. Uh, there has been unusual drying in the month of March and there was third lowest rainfall since 1901. So those were some of the factors which have accentuated the reasons of shrivel grains in the wheat production. It's again believed that with 1.5 degrees Celsius rise in temperature, the global wheat production could reduce from 2 to 7 percent and also the wheat yield has been reduced by 12 to 27 percent if the greenhouse uh, gases emissions are not lowered by 2100. Now uh, in the regions of Himalaya, we have witnessed that lots and lots of mining activities have taken place, over construction, uh, undefined construction has ta taken place. And this has affected the region. So the current carbon dioxide levels have surpassed the mark of 400 parts per million. The average temperature has risen by 1 degree Celsius pre-industrial period and uh, the Himalayan belt as we know have been divided into four regions, four sections that's the Shivaliks, Lesser Himalayas, Greater Himalayas and the Tethyan part. Now the Tethys is also not a great fossil site, uh, we see shallow waters which are not suitable for animals to find the food. The next is Chile. Uh, now Chile has been under a pest attack which is known as black strips. These are black colored pin headed size pests which have a function of sucking. Now the size of the chili has reduced from 10 centimeters to 5 centimeters because of it and nearly 40 hectares of the land has been destroyed. T. pavisnupinus, which is the group of the sucking pest has been affecting the regions in Southeast Asia, Australia, Thailand, Greece and has caused more damage than S. drosalis which is the native pest to India. Now but it, it is important because it not just attacks the flowers but also the leaves and as a result the whole crops goes away. So it's a worrying instance because India is the largest producer, consumer and exporter of chili. 40% of the world area under the chili crop is in India and chili requires huge investment from around 2.5 to 3 lakh per hectare. Most of the chili farmers actually pay an additional of 20 to, 20 to 25,000 to take the land on lease. Mandi is the Asia's largest chili mandi and all of them have been affected significantly by this chili pest. Uh, also this pest was initially seen only in the papaya uh, crops in India but later, at, later on it is spread. So in 2015 the first case was reported in papaya in Karnataka, then few ornamental crops in Karnataka and then it was seen across drumsticks, groundnuts, chili and has been seen across various crops. Now the next is Africa. The agriculture Agricultural market. Now, Malawi, 60% of the seeds traded in the Malawi market are uncertified. The new law now says that there has to be an instrument to regulate processing, certification, sale, and export of seeds. In the country where agriculture accounts for 80% employment and 80% exports, this law has come which says that if uncertified seeds are found, there would be a fine of 30 thousand dollars or 20 years of imprisonment. Now this is important because the farmer seed system is being replaced by improvised or high yielding hybrid varieties and since 2005 government has rolled out a program which is known as the input subsidy program. Now this provides subsidized fertilizers and seeds but the demand for the main crop which is legumes, sorghum, rice or maize have increased significantly and the seed companies have increased from just 5 in 2005 to 24. Uh, Africa is also seeing a battle between two systems. One is the traditional system, the other is the industrial seed system. Industrial seed system is dominated by multinationals, traditional seed system uh, by the native people. So African seed and biotechnological program has been started by African Union in 2008. The idea is to bring biotechnology methods within seed sector and within the continent there have been several economic blocks for regulation. For example, common market for East and Southern Africa, COMSE, uh, which is an economic block of 21 nations has been adopted, harmonization implementation plan in 2014, ECOWAS, a regional political block of 15 nations 
then we have similar other harmonized seed regulatory systems in 2013 which have been brought uh, now some of the crops are very unique for example potato in malawi Zamb uh, zambia is known for maize west africa is known for millets north africa is known for rice all of these grown uh, the rice grown along the bank of nile now zambia became the first country to be part of the harmonization of seed initiative under the uh, comisa and the sadec now the farmer has got a quality certification for trading of the indigenous program uh, of the indigenous seeds and the national plant resource center housed at zambia agricultural research institute zari has been created here 6000 species at minus 20 degrees have been preserved to give a sense of indigenous variety but there is absence of demand for these indigenous variety the government is justifying to uh, formalize the system where the seed sector can actually have its own value agriculture accounts for 32 percent of the africa's gdp and 60 percent of the labor force and therefore three-fourths of the sub-saharan population is either a small farmer subsistence farmer and uh, has 75 percent of the agricultural output a significant contribution in africa now uh, it has been believed that agra which is the alliance for green revolution in africa is one of the major organizations responsible because it intends to centralize the seed production in the hands of few multinationals and as a result african seed investment funds invest capital in the seed companies to deliver quality certification seeds to smallholders now regional seeds and plant variety protection frameworks are aimed to ensure that there is a regular trade that goes on if you look onto the seed sector la laws we can see different regions have different laws and different uh, durations the handouts would have this available now vegetarian diet is interesting it is believed that uh, jainism was the one to promote vegetarianism buddha himself ate meat however huan sang has uh, revealed that uh, indian buddhist population changed out to be vegetarian similarly Harshwardhan in the regions of Haryana focused on a vegetarian lifestyle we had Meghavahan who was the king of Gandhara now Afghanistan who unsuccessfully tried to introduce the concept of vegetarianism Brinjal is a crop which is native to India uh, people from Mesopotamia in the west visited Harappa and took the Brinjal and in Iran it was the Burani Bangan that became famous similarly Mesopotamians grew onion and there was a cross connection between the two civilizations during that time also we have seen that uh diet is important 100 grams of dal versus 100 grams of uh, dal versus 100 grams of meat from 100 grams of dal and 100 grams of meat both you would get 20 grams of uh, protein but with dal you would get 46 grams of carbohydrate in contrast to zero grams of carbohydrates in a meat diet so india has turned out to be a diabetes capital and during the british rule we had seen that famines became so common that there was a new cuisine that was built and that was just for flavors and this cuisine which was built for flavors actually did not had any nutrients so again diabetes in india one of the major reasons cited is the mental work excessive consumption of sugars and starch uh, a sedentary lifestyle which has increased significantly the next is the discarded photovoltaic cells now center for sustainable technologies at iisc bangalore has talked about a model residence which is built at nela mangal 30 kilometers from the iisc campus and this is completely built as you can see with the photovoltaic cells which have been discarded 60 percent of the building is used by the uh, is built by the pv cells uh, similarly even the dining table as you can see has been been built by the PV cells. Now discarded cells also have a capability to generate 40 to 50 percent of the original 1.2 kilowatt energy. So collectively they can generate around 10 to 20 watts of energy which is sufficient to power a Wi-Fi router or a mobile. We are also increasing focus on the PV capacity of 600 gigawatts by 2050. Now we would need to understand that if a PV cells last for 20 to 25 years then the recycling is not viable because recycling of a panel costs 20 to 20 30 dollars and india is set to generate nearly 1.8 million tons of pv waste by 2050 so there has to be another method which could be used now at lower temperatures these pv cells can contract and at hot temperatures they can expand indoor air quality
quality also needs to be taken into consideration because it has a crystallized silicon. Now outside it has a glass and a plastic polymer inside prevents the leakage of toxic materials like silver, tin uh, or lead from leaching out. Similarly, it is good alternative as it has less polymer. The thin PV cells have less polymer and are considered as good uh, or uh, good um, substitute. However, they have toxic metals like zinc, copper, gallium, cerium, cadmium, tellurium, but there is a relatively less chance of leaking them out. So those were some of the key aspects that we have discussed. As we mentioned, the discarded photovoltaic cells, the chili pest attack, the heat waves, banning of the grazing uh, of uh, cattle in the forest areas um, as the rule given by Maharashtra High Court and the food crisis, the food issues in Africa and uh, parts of India uh, have been significantly important. So those were some of the key issues that we have discussed for today. Wish you very good luck for your preparation. We'll meet soon again every month with the summary for Down to Earth and Yojana and Kurukshetra. Stay subscribed and follow the links for more details and handouts. Thank you.